Good morning, everyone. Good morning to everyone uh, here in person, as well as everyone joining us on Zoom. And happy Pentecost Sunday. And welcome to Chesterland UCC, and welcome to our weekly service. And as we say, here and in the UCC, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we like to add, as you are. Good morning. Um, I'm Luann Gerhardt, and I'm privileged to to read today's moment of focus, which is from an anonymous writer. Pentecost is coming. It will be an end and a beginning. It will bewilder and confuse, though some will fight it, the aching world calls it forth with urgency. Come, spirit, come. The spirit who moves like a rush of violent wind, who appears like fire, who is the breath of God. She comes to us unconcerned with order, wild with freedom, turning over anything and everything that stands in her way. Let her come and fill our mouths with words we didn't know we could speak. Let her come and help us hear in languages we once could not understand. She is being poured out. The pre-people will prophesy. The heavens will draw near. The chorus of voices past will join in and proclaim the truth of God. Justice will come. Do not be like the ones who sneer and ask, are they drunk? Do not be surprised by what's happening as if the scriptures and history and the prophets have not foretold. You've heard it said. The sun will burn out and the moon turn to blood before the day of justice arrives. Instead, open your hearts and pray that God's grace may carry you into the kingdom. Let courage rise up, let passion inflame, let love transform, let weeping fill the land. There will be no peace until there is justice, no healing until wrongs are made right. Come, spirit, come and turn the world of evil upside down. Please rise if you are able and join in singing our first hymn of the morning, Come, O Spirit, with your sound, found on page 265 in the New Century Hymnal and on the screen. Salvation. 
So uh, there's, not a, there's not a kid's message uh, in the bulletin just because uh, we haven't had them for a spell. And I just, you know what, I don't really have like a thing, but hand mic, thank you. Um, hey, Abby, what's up, kiddo? Oh, someone's clinging to mom this morning. So, but um, I wanted to catch up with you guys and, and, and see how you're doing. How's school been going? Yeah? How, how's your school been going? Good. Yeah? And horses? You guys uh, are, are doing a lot with horses? No. No? But you have horses, right? No, they live at mom's, mommy's barn. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. So what have, you, what have you guys been doing? I'm just trying to catch up with you. I haven't seen you in like a couple months. Playing with baby goats. Playing with baby goats? Nice. How about you? Are you playing with the baby goats? Yeah, but I'm also playing with baby rabbits. Baby goats and baby rabbits. Well, what are you guys hoping to do this summer? Mm, I don't know. You, you don't know? No. What do you want to do this summer? Uh, swim. Swim, that's good. Abby, what do you want to do this summer? Hide, yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah, good. What do you want to do this summer? Uh, yeah. if, if you could pick one thing to do this summer, what would it be? Play outside. I think that is an excellent choice, especially on a day like this where I am already sweating a lot, a lot. I'm going to look like, uh, like someone who's guilty of something by the end of the service. Um, well, um, so what, anything else new? I'm just looking to catch up with you guys and are you excited to be here? Yeah. yeah, of course. Are you guys excited to be here? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this summer the best summer, right? You're going to swim. You're going to play outside. Abby, are you going to hide from me this summer? No? Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful summer. I hope I'm seeing you more. And take off, friends. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody. And welcome to our visitors. Um, so... <laughs> My name's Connie. I'm the vice moderator currently at Community Church. And uh, this, this morning's social justice moment's going to be just a bit of a departure. Um, so over the last few weeks, we've been talking about issues such as neurodivergence, climate change, environmental justice, immigration, people leaving their homelands to... Uh, find safety, and next step, our local organization supporting youth. And in the coming weeks, we'll hear moments on such topics as pride and LGBTQIA plus inequalities, racial equity buddies, and voter empowerment, and more. So look forward to all that. But just know that we're a church that is deeply steeped in caring for and about those marginalized, traumatized, and insecure in food, shelter, safety, self-expression. Um, and then just to park and back just a moment to our visioning and how we worked so hard on deciding what our future will look like in the near future. And all that type of programming that we do, that we want to do, requires a commitment from all of us. And the services that we can provide in the world, being the hands and feet of the love of God, requires that we have uh, infrastructure to work from. Um, it doesn't have to be here, but it's pretty nice here, so we should maybe try to keep it here. It's beautiful. Okay, so our facility is um, used to house a lot of things that happen during the week. Um, a lot of things happen on Sundays, but even during the week things happen here. Um, so just remember in your um, thinking about giving, social justice, we spend our social justice monies separately from operating, but if we don't have enough operating, then we can't do the social justice outreach. So even though 
um, the social justice monies come from outreach, we still need you to think about outreach when you're giving for operational. I can't think of any words, so that's fine. Um, so today's service auction, which happens to be one of our biggest fundraisers, the biggest fundraiser, um, I'm calling this one service auction light because there's so much good stuff in there that we're going to want to do this again. So you won't have to do the same thing, but maybe something different. You're going to be excited about all the service auction items and the silent auction items. So think of the operating funding of this church and our programming when you are participating in the service auction today. Thank you. And just, you know, a few quick words about, I mean, this, this is a church that is focused on uh, social justice. We live in a culture now where it just seems like everything is falling apart and that every marginalized group that exists is, it's like people are doubling down on margin, continuing to marginalize those groups. It can get overwhelming. For anyone who cares, for anyone who has compassion, empathy, it can get overwhelming to see so much pain and suffering in the world, especially when there are things going on that there's very little we can tangibly do something about as individuals, right? So when we're talking about social justice, when we are as a church in messages from friend to friend, remember that all oppressions are connected. Okay, um, we, we call it uh, intersectional oppression. All oppressions are interconnected. You don't have to address every injustice in the world. Because if you tried to, you would burn out, you would wear out. Find something that you are passionate about. Find something that you, you truly believe something needs to change. And when you focus on that, you are by default affecting oppression overall, right? Because they're intersectional. So if you're focused, say, on racial justice, that will ultimately have a larger effect than just on the topic of racial justice. If you're focused on food insecurity, wow, food insecurity, once, once you are able to provide food for people, and to watch how that changes their, their lives and, and their education. When you have food, you have energy. When you have food, you are able to, uh, you know, to, to exist in this world at, 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 at the best of your ability. So whatever social justice branch you decide to focus on, remember that it affects everything. All right, that's my mini sermon, but you're still getting a full sermon too, so. <laughs> You didn't get out of it. This is the time in our gathering where we extend the invitation to you all to take part in the life of the church through the act of giving. If you feel so led as to share your resources with Chesterland UCC, you can do that three ways. You can do it uh, through the QR code that is found in your bulletin. You can snail mail it in or you can leave it in the plate on your way out today. And with that, would you please join me in an attitude of prayer or meditation for our offering blessing? Sacred imagination, you keep us from caving to forces that dull and discourage our hope. You enable dreams and visions and prophecies of what could become. Bless our offerings to building and creating and perceiving your kingdom among us in small and extraordinary ways. May we be courageous in our efforts. May it be so. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Acts 2, verses 1 through 18, the inclusive Bible. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the disciples all met in one room. Suddenly, they heard what sounded like a violent rushing wind from heaven. The noise filled the entire house in which they were sitting. Something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each one. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as she enabled them. 
Now, there, we, there were devout people living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, they all assembled. But they were bewildered to hear their native languages being spoken. They were amazed and astonished. Surely all of these people speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears these words in our native tongue? All were amazed and disturbed. They asked each other, what does this mean? But others said mockingly, they're too drunk, too drunk. They've drunk too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11 and addressed the crowd. Women and men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. These people are not drunk as you think. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, it's what Joel the prophet spoke of. In the days to come, it is our God who speaks. I will pour out my spirit on all humankind. Your daughters will, and sons will prophesy. Your young people will see visions and your elders will dream dreams. Even on the most significant of my people, even on the most insignificant of my people, both women and men, I will pour out my spirit, and in those days, they will prophesy. Thank you. So today is Pentecost Sunday. Happy birthday. And our scripture text from Acts is basically just that. It's a story of the birth of the church. And while this was not like, you know, the church as we might understand it today as like an organized um, institution, what transpires here in Acts is actually a pretty, I think, a pretty apt way to describe what the church is at its core or what it could be at its core, what it should be at its core, perhaps what the church was intended to be from the very beginning. And this birth of the church, as a lot of births are, if you've ever been present for a birth, uh, wild and chaotic and loud and euphoric. I mean, the writer of Acts describes this miraculous event, this birth of the church, as a violent, rushing wind. And for those who don't know, this is the only time that word appears in Scripture, this form of the word violent. So it was obviously a very special moment. So this just isn't any other event. This spectacular event possesses the violent power to reorient what we know, what we believe, what we think we know about God about Jesus, about each other, about ourselves. And in order to encourage, you know, that reflection on the church's birthday, the divine spirit has to do something new, which is what we're seeing in this story. Something powerful, something really kind of strange. And strange is definitely on the menu here. I mean, what we got? We got tongues of fire, that come to rest on the disciples, and they are empowered to speak in other languages as if they had sort of like, you know, a Star Trek, you know, communi- you know they, they, they speak and then the other people know what they're saying kind of thing. I think last year I used the illustration of um, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that fish you put in the ear, and it absorbs language and spits out you know, someone's actual language. Am I really nerding out here? Anyone? Hitchhiker's Guide? Okay, good. All right. But not surprisingly, some of the people thought the disciples were drunk. I mean, who knows? They might have been. I, I don't know for sure. But despite that, everyone bearing witness to this crazy event is astonished, and they are flabbergasted. And not surprisingly, as I think most people would, they ask, what does this mean? It just seems sort of chaotic, right? And that question is soon answered as Peter steps up and delivers a message where he basically echoes the words of the prophet Joel 
to explain that this extraordinary happening is God's spirit uh, descending upon all flesh, all flesh, young and old, men and women, enslaved and free, and everything in between. And in doing so, Peter reminds the people that God makes a habit of disrupting our own limited and artificial sort of binary categories that we impose upon ourselves and we impose upon the world. Peter uses what would have been a very recognizable scripture passage from Joel to connect with his audience, and he uses that passage, in essence, to shatter the need, to do away with the need for tidy and convenient categories of existence, to shatter the need for nice and neat binaries for everyone and everything to fit into. And of course, this is not a literal story, but it paints a picture of the early church as a dynamic community of people following the teachings of Jesus and who are empowered by the Spirit to carry out God's mission of healing and wholeness and liberation and hope. And this community is strikingly diverse and strikingly inclusive. This story takes place during a gathering called the Festival of Weeks, W-E-E-K-S. And this festival, which was an annual festival, it occurred 50 days after Passover. Hence the name Pentecost, which is Greek for 50. And this was, like I said, it was an annual Jewish custom. So Jews from all over the Roman Empire would have been in Jerusalem. They would have been in Jerusalem since Passover and then waiting for the Festival of Weeks. And this gathering was intended, not by accident, it was intended to be an explicitly inclusive gathering and celebration. Now, how do I know that? Well, in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 11, the Israelites were told that this festival, the festival of weeks, was a time to, quote, rejoice before Yahweh with your spouse and your daughters and your sons and with your indentured workers, female and male alike, and with the Levites who live in your towns, and with the strangers who live among you, and the widows and widowers and the orphans among you. Basically, it's saying everyone needed to be included in this festival. In other words, a wide net was being cast here that encompasses all social and religious and political locations. And so this event in Acts, whether you read it literally or symbolically, this event, Pentecost, reveals how God's Spirit can be a force of divine chaos. A force of divine chaos that shatters our labels, shatters our binaries, and shatters our preconceived notions of who has value within society and who doesn't. Because it becomes difficult to bomb the hell out of people we don't like when we view them through the lens of Pentecost. How can we kick queer children out of our homes when the violent wind of God is telling us that the very heart of the divine is inclusivity. How can we refuse refugees entry into this country when the first appearance of the Holy Spirit within Scripture so clearly points toward welcoming and taking care of the stranger? Divine chaos leading to radical inclusivity is cemented in this passage from the book of Acts and Joel. And Pentecost shows us that community and inclusivity is the seedbed for healing. Community and inclusivity is the essential ingredient 
for wholeness, for liberation, for hope. You've heard the saying, until everyone's free, none of us are free. That's what that means. And these are the qualities that gave birth to the church. This is the result of the uniting spirit of Pentecost. It's in the very DNA of the church. And just as we should take the time to reflect on the newborn church during this season of Pentecost, we also need to honestly reflect on the modern church as well, the contemporary church. And when we refer to the contemporary church, it's tempting for some of us to think of institutions, of denominations, of, of, of dogma, of structures. It's tempting to think of anything but what the church actually is. Us, you and I, sitting here today, we are the church. And on the birthday of the church, we should take stock and ask ourselves some questions that, you know, not only help us to reflect on what the church is, but what it hopes to become in the future. We just did that as an individual church a few weeks ago. And with this being the birthday of the church, it reminds me of a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. where he says, I'm not going to get the quote exactly right, but he says, if you're the same person at 60 that you you were at 30, you've wasted your life. Think about that for a second. If you have not changed, if the church has not changed, if the church has not grown and become more inclusive and more compassionate and more accepting, then perhaps the church has wasted the last 2,000 years. But we need to ask questions. Questions like, are we today as the church, are we embodying the radical inclusivity that was modeled at Pentecost? And if not, are we willing to change our binary ways of, of thinking? Or are we, are we sharing our hopes and fears with one another and creating the safe space to do so? Or are we allowing our own different languages in the form of miscommunication to fracture us? Or are we allowing our past hurts to dictate our future? Can we have hope in the midst of cultural chaos and uncertainty? Or more so, do we believe that, similar to what happened in Acts chapter 2, do we believe that new beginnings can emerge out of cultural chaos? Because if we do, then we have to translate those beliefs into boots on the ground, or financial support for those boots, or letters to the editor, or local activism, or something as simple as volunteering for Geauga Pride, or simply just going to Geauga Pride to support the hard work that has gone into planning it. Because let me tell you something, those groups and those people who stand against what I'm saying here, what we stand for as a church, those groups are organized. And they are very, very active. They're showing up at libraries to ban books. They're calling in bomb threats to to stop drag story hours. They're doing whatever they can to intimidate people into silence. They're willing to use force against people to get their way. They want to control the narrative of what children are taught in schools. They want to tell teachers that they can't say gay or teach the real history of black people in this country. They want to tell parents what they can and cannot expose their children to. And more than anything, They want their brand of Christianity to lead the way under the banner of Christian nationalism. In other words, they want to use binaries as a weapon of control, as a tool of exclusion, and ultimately, they want to establish white, Christian, and straight 
as the only legitimate way of existing in this world. This is not conjecture. This is not me being paranoid. This has been verbalized by powerful politicians and political groups. Football players are telling women to get back into the kitchen. And it's being legislated here in Ohio and around the country. So what do we do? Well, as a church, we must embody and act on that uniting spirit of Pentecost. That violent wind that blows through our binary structures, that shatters our silos of black and white, that scoops us up like a sacred tornado and sets us back down in a world where we're told in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, there is no Jew or Greek, no slave or citizen, no male or female. All are one in Christ Jesus. And so my hope is that in much the same way that the disciples experienced the inclusive spirit of God through wind and fire, that may we today allow that same spirit to build a fire within us, a fire that empowers us to imagine and work toward new transformative worlds, as well as to imagine and work toward a transformative future for all of us. May it be so. May we make it so. Amen. As colors in the sky, we move and blend in love. A touch of this, a mix, a match, a gift from heaven above. Our genders may seem fixed, but even these may change. As we find beauty in between that first seem strange. Our bodies may not match the way we feel inside, but we can change, transform, and find the love still deep and wide. So if we break the mold, traditions put in place, let us discourage what kindness, love, and grace. Creating God, you dance, you move as one in three. Come show us by your rainbow light our shared humanity. Heavens and the earth are made new every day. Help us discover by your grace new, new life, new way. The divine spirit is sacred and just. She does not unify for sentimentality's sake. She does not unify to sweep oppression under the rug. She nurtures solidarity across communities to build righteous power, to deepen bonds of love, to deliver us from all that steals and kills and destroys that we and all the earth may have life and have it abundantly. With this hope and this commitment, may it be so, and may we make it so. Amen. The murmur of the dove song, like the challenge of her flight, like the vigor of the winds rush, like the new flame's eager might. Come, Holy Spirit, come. 
to the members of Christ's body, to the branches of the vine, to the church in faith assembled, to our midst as gift and sign. Come, Holy Spirit, come. With the healing of division, with the ceaseless voice of prayer, with the power of love and witness, with the peace beyond compare, 